In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers' questions, which is how to use the config and setup in a line chart in Chart.js. And this is a quite good question because more and more of the Chart.js examples are starting to use this kind of structuring. So let's start and explore this. So first of all, this was asked in one of my other videos about how to shorten long data labels on the y-axis in Chart.js. And in here, I had a question from, from Arnab and a special thank you to Arnab for asking this question and it was the following sir the udemy course is really nice so as well thank you for joining my udemy course and this is the following then but as they introduce the config plus setup in chart.js example i'm unable to understand the use could you please show us any example of how to use it in a line chart and progressive chart or progressive line chart please so, well, basically this one here, I covered one of them and I will be covering this deeper in, but right now I want to focus specifically on the line chart here. Well, there is a progressive line chart, but I guess you can also make a progressive bar chart, etc., etc. However, let's focus on this here. So how will we do this? Well, to do this, let's start and explore just what we have in the installation guide here. So if you look here and we click here on getting started and we press the sub menu and just a quick heads up, Chart.js has launched a new version 3.4.0, which is quite exciting. They have some new features in there. I will cover it maybe in another video. Uh, first of all, let's focus on this here. So here we just can I can just copy this part here. We just can copy that. Once we do that here, paste that in here. And then next I have this one here. This is what we also need. We can copy that. This will eventually be in here. So we have the Chart.js library now. Now here we have this, and then you can see here already their config and setup. And while this is really nice, there is no real, well, there's a very limited explanation here. It says you find, find and render the chart using our configurations. And then it shows you some parts include setup and then config above. All right. And this is in the indicator. That is, uh, that's that easy for, it's that easy to get started in chart. Yes. All right. Let's see then how we're going to work with this. So first of all, we have you this, we can copy this first, put it in here, and then we follow the instructions here, set up first and then the config. All right, so once you look here, and then you can see here the config is being shown first and then the setup. So you might be confused, and I guess they do this in alphabetic order. I would pers personally would say move it instead of alphabetic order, put the setup first because that was the first one. So let's copy here the setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of this here, copy this, and the setup is basically all of this information here, which will make your, your chart. And then once I paste this in here, all right, we have this one, and I will just give you this, this setup block, I guess. Uh, BL, all right. And then here we have the next one, which would be the config config block so what we are going to put in here is the config part and let's copy this here put it in here and once we did that proper indentations we can basically remove this and this would be i guess the rendering or the initialization of it what do we call this here finally use this and finally render uh, render i guess that's the right term render block so we have this now. So we know all of these three parts here. And if you really look at it, basically it's quite similar, except that now certain parts has been moved. Basically here the config is this, but if we really look at it, and you probably are very familiar if we would do this, we say here, I can say a constant, that should be normally the, the right term, constant chart equals new chart. And then we have here the document get element which is the element of my chart which is the canvas id all right and then in here we could just basically put in the semicolon or you can say here dot get context and then uh was that do 2d let's double check i i tend to copy this part get context 2d all right that is correct in here 2d and then so basically this part here is just a con just a translation or a shorter version of whatever is in here. So what they did here was, and this is quite clever, they cut it into blocks, making it easier for you to read. Sadly enough, it's not always very well explained 
explained in the documentation. This is probably the reason why you were struggling with it. So once we have this one here, you could see here basically it's this here. Yeah, you can say here, constant my chart, did I get anything? Or oh, this would be CTX. That's the mo usually the version here where you get the item here. All right, so that's probably what would be the original version is like this. CTX, all right. And then here it will be my chart, constant my chart. And then we just get here the new chart CTX. This would be it. And in here, we put in an enter. Oh, we put on, of course, these brackets as well. Put in the brackets here. And why is this one there? This one, too. I want to move, move this here. And this would really be your basics here. Then you start to put in type, bar, uh, type data, etc., etc. So what we did here is you can see here this part is just basically this here. We are the three essentials of it. And which are the essentials? The essentials, basically the type indicating what kind of chart it is, the data, and then with the data you will have here again. We go to data, and then we have the data sets. Then in here we could do all kind of options. What exactly we have? data sets here, basically this one here. This would be basically in here. Put in this, and there we are, label as well. And here maybe what we're missing here is the labels indicating here. So that's basically what we're really doing. What we're really doing is cutting our original text in here. So I hope this was very clear, but let's look at it. Let's, let's read the text that we copied so far so we have a more better understanding all right you can see here this is the labels and the labels is a constant here which refers to this here so this is just an array referring to the variable here and then we have the data sets we put in here the data sets and we could add up another data set here as well which we put in here comma you could do this and if we say here second data set and i'll just give this another color i would say 255 and i'll put this on zero see what happens here as well, zero, and then here, two, five, five. We have here the data, I'll just put this on 10, 15, 12, etc., etc. If I save this now, we should see here two different lines. All right, there you are. We have two different lines, one a nice bright yellow, other one for a red color. So this here, the data equals data here. So this is just now a constant making it shorter because from here on you could basically play around adding up new values in here controlling that because sometimes I, I tend to use the constant we put a constant here up with a value let's say data value data I'll just say here data value and it equals we just put in here we could do like this basically this and then we could put in here data value this here so that's basically what you're doing here. If I save this here, everything saved me or remains the same because it's just exactly the same. We're just moving constant around. Here, this is your setup with every constant you have. And then here you have the constant of the of the data. But the data is basically the array or an object containing multiple values, the labels, the data sets, and the data sets is an array as well with label, background color, border color. And the data, and here the data value, of course, refers to this. The label here refers to that one here. And if we go down here, so we have to have the setup. Why the setup first? Because once you have this part, the setup, with all these variables assigned, then it will run through here the config and the configuration. Basically, this is the configuration. Specifically, configuration is covering this part here. Configuration. In here, you can see all these options that we can do here covering this part here more specifically the options itself so you can go in deep in here you can put it in here but you can also assign certain constants above but then put it in here so if you would say your conf uh, options well let's see what can we, what kind of configuration could we do uh, interaction mode data sets well there's all kind of option responsive charts well we can say legend let's say we would we do the configuration for the legend so, so we say legend plugin and then we say legend display none so we will hide this here you can say your plugins and then here we say legend and we say here disable fault uh, disable or display false 
since we don't want to display it. So if we save this now, you will see now it will remove the upper legend here. Of course, what we could do as well is here we could say here uh, const height legend equals, and then we say here just false, we just put it as a false value, and then we say here height legend. Save this, so refresh, there you are, and if we say here height legend. Well, basically, it should be show legend. This should be the, probably the more appropriate word because it says here display or display legend. This could be this. Then we can say false and we can say you're not true to display the legend. Yes, true. There you are. Showing the legend or hiding legend using a variable. This is why your setup must be first because you're using constants. This constants first because why? These constants are being implemented in here. So if like JavaScript or the code will read, it will read the, this text, and then if this would be read first, putting it here up, it will give an error. It says, we see here a constant of label, but we don't see it. If this would be here like this, you will see you get an error. Save that, refresh, error. Why? We have a reference, or I guess here an uncut reference error, that's the right term. The reference here is not there's no reference. You cannot access labels before initialization, meaning that the reference doesn't exist yet. So now we make the reference exist, or basically the constant will be initialized, meaning that we be recognized. And then here it will say, oh well, it will work because the reference works here now. So this is the first part of the reference. And then after we need to use the config block. Why? Because in the config block we are using this here, data comma. The data comma is this specific constant. So you can see here the structure. First, we go basically on micro level, meaning we're going to just get the constant. And then after we got on, well, one level up of the micro, which would be, uh, I have no, uh, no idea, I guess it's the meso level. The meso level, meaning that you are one level up, because here this is dependent on that, but this one is dependent. This would be here on these, these two, and this will be basically your macro level with a config or basically here you have all of these data, the data here and this show legend would be a constant as well dependent on everything here above and eventually once that all works then you start to render the entire chart you want to render the chart and then we say all right get the chart and get the config because the config is built on this and this is built in or dependent on this and this is dependent on the upper part so i hope this was a bit clear i will make another video as well where we just break one down and convert it into a setup config and render block thank you for watching this video and i hope you enjoy it and if you enjoy this video you probably will enjoy this one as well and if you're interested in chart.js check out in the description box the link directing to my chart.js course where you can learn everything about chart.js and finally of course make sure you subscribe to my channel